WikiLeaks releasing emails it claims are from the Clinton campaign. And we remind you the information may have come to light from unreliable sources. Some are pointing at the Russians. Either way, the emails are out there. They appear to show Hillary Clinton was worried the GOP would not nominate Donald Trump and that some campaign aides worried that Bill Clinton could be a liability. And former Clinton right-hand man, man, Doug Band, allegedly called daughter Chelsea a spoiled brat and a liberal activist called Clinton a liar. Plus, the Clintons' team was worried early on about the threat from Senator Bernie Sanders and a potential run by Vice President Joe Biden. Brad Gersman is a Democratic strategist, founding partner of Gotham Government Relations. Kevin McCullough is a syndicated radio host. Great to have you both as uh, we enjoy your company so much. Just want to share this with you. We just got this from our Fox News Research Department about our, the electoral map. And we have now just changed Florida and the state of Nevada from toss up states to leaning Democrats. And I want to bring that into the conversation here, Brad, because I'm curious whether or not there's anything game changing in these WikiLeaks emails that you think could impair Clinton's campaign. No, I think this falls into that bucket of just gossip, gossip, gossip. Nothing tangible, nothing hardcore, nothing condemning. Of course, nothing great for her, but that said, I don't think it's going to change the map. As far as the map is concerned, I would just say is that what Trump has done in the last couple of days, uh, since you know all the you know the hoopla over some of the things that he said, is he's you know he's emboldened his major core of supporters, but he hasn't done anything to pull in the moderate Republicans or the independents at all, in my estimation. Hey, let's ask Kevin about that. What do, you, what do you think of the last few days, but also whether or not what we're seeing from these WikiLeaks dumps, and by the way, there was just a recent one, everyone's just going through those emails, sure. whether or not there's anything that would be game-changing for Clinton. I haven't seen anything yet. I mean, I, I don't think that... I, it was interesting that the one activist is saying what a lot of people inside of Hillary's circle have said for years, and that is that she's... She's dishonest and she's not nice and, and these people behave in this way and it's kind of what the, it mirrors the general perception that the public has, 67% think she's not trustworthy. But in terms of the math and the map, I, I'm not sure that we're at the final stage even four weeks out. And I think that, that? There are, I think that there are other events that may happen if there's a terrorist attack, if there's another health scare, if there's some other revelation on Trump that is not good. I just think we have, even though we're now down to 28 days, I think we've still got a long bit of the road to go. You know, Brad, I can't help but think about the rallies that Donald Trump still continues to gather in all of these states. They're still huge. You still have the lines outside. Simon Rosenberg, also a Democratic strategist, say, says that these rallies do mean something. They do talk about enthusiasm, and enthusiasm can turn to voter turnout. What about that? Well, again, I think it goes back to his supporters. There's a difference between Trump supporters and Republicans. And the Trump supporters are a subsection of the Republicans. And they are fired up. They are enthusiastic. They will show up anywhere to see Donald Trump. They'll travel in vans, cars, walk, row, whatever they have to do Bro. to get to a Trump event. And that's very different. Now, regular Republicans, okay, let's call moderate Republicans, ones that, for instance, I could get along with, <laughs> those individuals... They are scared, frightened, but don't are, know what the they, next yeah, 28 but are they days will be. Are motivated enough to get out and vote for Hillary Clinton? Also, for Democrats, are they nervous enough about Donald Trump that they're willing to disregard some of their concerns about Hillary Clinton, Kevin? I don't think that Clinton has overcome her enthusiasm gap yet. And I do think, I agree with Simon, I think that the rallies actually demonstrate something. She's having a hard time packing in rooms with three to 500 people sometimes. You know, they actually make the crowd look bigger by where they put the camera and stuff. He's still drawing tens and tens of thousands to these things. And I would disagree with Brad on this point. Karl Rove won two elections, one very close and one not as close, based on enthusiasm in pockets of where the electorate needed to be. And if Trump wins Nevada and Florida and Virginia and Ohio and maybe picks up Michigan or New Hampshire, he's going to win the election. Well, of course, the electoral map changes at times. And we, are, we just saw that change right now, that these states are leaning somewhat in the Democratic way. But, but we do have several weeks. And I think it's worth pointing out that timeline as well. The Associated Press, after the video leak, after the debate, went to swing states and spoke specifically to undecided women voters. Mm -hmm. And here's what some of them had to say to the Associated Press. Many Republicans and independents said they already weren't going to support Trump, but weren't convinced to vote for Hillary Clinton. Some said they wouldn't vote at all or would choose libertarian candidate Gary Johnson. Brad, does that make you nervous? Look, this is the reality. I mean, I, I'm not here to advocate for Hillary Clinton. I'm just here to try to, you know, you ask questions, sure. I give answers. As far as Hillary Clinton's concerned, 
there's a lot of negatives. Come on. And yeah, I think in answer to your question is, so what are the moderate Republicans going to do? Are they going to vote for Trump? Are they going to this, that? I know what they're going to well, do. What about the they're going to be concerned well. about their own elections locally and where, after they poll the people in their districts, where they want to be and that whether they're going to endorse Trump or not endorse Trump. Kevin, what do you think of what Brad had to say? No, I, th I think that he's. I think that he's mostly right. I. I, I, it's just hard to tell, still 28 days out, what enthusiasm on the day of the election is going to lead to. If you have something like what happened Friday, two days before we go to the polls, you're going to depress Republican turnout. But there is a core block of voters that aren't just Republicans, they are blue-collar uh, Democrats in the, in the production states, the Rust Belt states, that I think are largely not noticed in some of these polls. And I, I just don't know how reliable any of them it are. It seems that both of you are saying that there's an element that's completely out of control for both of these candidates. We don't know what leaks are coming for either of them, and perhaps something like that would determine the election. I mean, Brad, you, do you think, despite all the strategy and all the money, that that's what this is coming down to? When unfavorables and negatives are so high for, for both of them that anything can move this election yeah. very, very quickly. It, it's it, when people are, are, people are, are predisposed to dislike both of them. Keep that in mind. That's what the polls are saying. When that's the case, you can get a whole bunch more people on that don't like list but and the other guy or gal have, can win. You do have early voting as well, Kevin, yeah. right? And so if something like the video comes out and someone's angry enough about the video, does that prompt them to cast a ballot early just in reaction to either the WikiLeaks, the video, or anything else? I actually got an email from a listener this week who said, I already voted. Is it too late to rescind my vote? Because I wanted to take it away uh, because of the, the leaked audio tape. No, I, I think that this all plays into the math. And I just think that it's too, it's too close and it's far too uh, volatile to be able to say, if Iran for some reason attacked one of our vessels sure. in the Gulf, I think, you, I think that would dramatically impact particularly the discussion of the Iran bill and could be very favorable for Trump. If Trump's got other skeletons that are not out yet, Hillary's in, in a great spot. I just think it's way too close to It makes to it tough to analyze. It's great to have you both and have your thoughts. It definitely makes it tough, right? Because you just don't know what's coming in the next few hours, few days, and, and what will come of it. Brad and Kevin, great to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. John?